Welcome to We're Here, We're Queer, We're Latinx. It's complicated. I'm Enrique Zapene, creator, executive producer, and host of LATV's The Q Agenda. And thank you for tuning into our presentation about the Latinx LGBTQ plus segment. I am here with LATV's co-executive director, Andres Palencia. Thank you, thank you, Enrique, and thank you for tuning in. If we learned anything from this election, it's that our Latino community is not a monolith. Add the layer of LGBTQ to that, and you're looking at a much more complex picture. But as a, as a marketer, you're looking at an intersection of $1.7 trillion of Latinx buying power and about $917 billion of LGBTQ plus buying power. Whew. That's a lot of power. And as a member of the LGBTQ plus Latinx community, Andres and I want to give an update and some insight into accessing the power. We want to start by uh, telling a little more about ourselves. Well, in my case, I grew up in Venezuela and I happened to grow up around the television industry because my family was involved in it. And, um, you know, as a young gay man, I never saw myself represented on TV. Um, I always, in telenovelas and Latino shows, it was always like, you know, like the buffoon or the clown, the, the you know, over the top gay character that was always being made fun of or, uh, or was always like the bad guy in the story. And I just definitely, I wanted to make a change. I wanted to be seen the way that I knew like me and some of my friends to be and be represented with dignity. So um, I started working in the industry and, and again, I ran into that wall where most of the characters that I was finding and I was booking as an actor, some of them even as a straight characters, um, you know, always like the, whoever the, the part was that had anything to do with the LGBTQ community was always, again, the same, the buffoon or the criminal. Um, so I finally decided to take cards into my own hands and started creating opportunities. And um, long story short to late, I came up with the idea of a talk show about the LGBTQ community. And I was lucky enough to find a home at LATV with this incredible group of supporting people who sat down with me and helped me polish the idea. And it is what you see today where it's us being true as ourselves, expressing our opinions and having real honest conversations. And where you see any subject from politics to entertainment to um, lifestyle through the lens of people that are part of the community and that are living in the now as the world is constantly changing. And um, again, luckily through this team at LATV, yeah. our family, we were able to, to find a space where to be true to ourselves. And I think for, from my perspective, I've always, you know, when I started in entertainment, I started as a writer, as a producer. Um, and for me, I instantly gravitated towards, I wanted to represent what I didn't see. And at that time in the, you know, mid 2000s, it was, I didn't see the, my Latino experience, my friend's Latino experience, even my parents' real Latino experience. I didn't see us represented there. I loved, uh, I loved what I saw when I saw things that that made sense. I loved celebrating the the wins, but I it I was always drawn to try to create the content or facilitate it, and I always dreamed of having a a place that would advocate for that. So I found myself uh, working at LATV. I started as an intern um, and just kind of building my career, coming and going. And we hit this pivotal point around uh, 2009 where we greenlit the zoo and we said, it's a, it's a variety talk show, we said we need to have a show that celebrates Latino wins but also accurately represents us. And within that show, I felt very strongly that we should have a, an LGBTQ presence. We, we got Dennis Pastorizo on board and that kind of started this trend um, of just laying the seeds and the groundwork to make the case to be like, look, we can kind of see the cultural trends changing. We can see, we can start to see uh, Latinos popping up as you know cultural leaders, as as uh, as influencers on on where the tides of music are going, where the tides of movies of of creative is going. You know, talking about 
that journey leads us to our mission as a pioneering bilingual media company, elevating the Latino voices, redefining culture. Absolutely. LATV Studios is an incubator for rising talent, a platform for genuine expression and a welcome guest in millions of homes from coast to coast. We're a minority owned and operated entity committed to providing authentic content that is created by Latinos for everyone. LATV content is distributed through national television, digital, OTT, and social media. That's who we are and what we believe in, and our TV audience represents that millennial generation that pushes culture forward. We're 70% U.S. born, pretty evenly split when it comes to male or female identifying. We consider ourselves the 200 percenters. There are people who see themselves 100% Latino and identify with their culture, while also feeling 100% identified with American or, or pop culture uh, here in the States. Sure. Um, and this is, this is where we see why identity plays such a huge role in connecting to any piece of this, this Latino audience. To paint a more clear picture of our reach as a network, you can see LATV is in all the major Latino markets, which includes 82% of Hispanic households, accounting for over 12 million homes. When we pair that with our digital reach and targeting capabilities, we're able to reach the Latino population and as a network with over 20 years in this Hispanic space, we've built our content strategy around the passion points that give us the best connection with the Latino segment. So we have this inclusive uh, content strategy and to come up with that, we analyzed our historical trends and data to look beyond just ratings to try to identify the through lines to our most successful content. We had to take a look at genres that were that resonated most at featured personalities and influencers who produced engagement peaks. We were also forward thinking and seeing if what was working best with our audience reflected the needs of our clients. Yeah, that's right. And then this process lays the groundwork for our inclusive content strategy, where we're focusing our content around three passion points, culture, Latina empowerment, and LGBTQ plus pride. Today, we're focusing on this last passion point, and it's the Q Agenda success as a model for how to achieve success in connecting effectively with the Latinx LGBTQ plus segment in today's climate, where there is an increased public scrutiny on um, performative allyship and superficial representation that we fight every day. It helps you understand why people came together so much for the Black Lives Matter movement, Correct. why the Black Lives Matter movement inspired a lot of people to, to look into and care about the whole trans history and the, and, the, and the trans movement. Our key property that has shown how successful this approach can be is the Q Agenda. It's an inclusive LGBTQ plus talk show featuring, for the first time, a trans Latina host. It's become a case study for us in developing a strategy to engage the LGBTQ plus Latinx segment in a way that's empowering to the community through a process that's equitable and inclusive with resulting creative that is brand friendly and effective. With campaigns ranging from major players such as McDonald's to Mondelez to advocacy groups such as AIDS Healthcare Foundation and GLAAD, the Q Agenda has been successful at helping brands access the Latinx LGBTQ plus segment, and even in helping connect with the broader millennial Latino audience through custom content created by the Q Agenda team. Inclusion and equity in the process has been fundamental in achieving the success for us and our partners. By process, we mean doing everything that we can as decision makers to ensure representation at all levels. Enrique is the creator of and producer and host of the Q Agenda. So what we've tried to do as we develop that show and as we bring these voices in is to say, we know through our casting process, we know through meeting these personalities, we know we have the right representation um, visibly on screen. And then we have to look within our own institution and say, do we have an ecosystem? Do we have an environment where when we're asking for genuine expression where it's a, it's a safe place to do that. It's a fun place to do that. It's a place where we don't want to be, we don't want to be gatekeepers. We want to be empowering and enabling. We want to make sure that if, and it's, it's paid off for us. We want to say, can we, can we support this team in a way where we're not, we're not putting a label on something. We're not telling someone who to be or who not to be. Exactly. We're sharing our collective goals 
we're having our, our team from the Q Agenda who are uh, immigrant producers. They're from every part of the, of the, of the community, of our Latino community, Latino. representing themselves. It's been such a humbling journey and such a fantastic one to now sit next to Juliana and Liana and Victor. And, and we speak of every topic. We go from entertainment to politics to lifestyle, but we, the conversations, you get their opinions and you see the point of view through their lens. And to briefly give, give a taste of, of what it's like, we'll show you a little, uh, a little promo clip of, of the Q agenda. Super happy to, to, to see that the Q agenda is being not only diverse, but inclusive, which is beyond equity. It's really giving a voice. So thank you for being that voice for us. I journal and I write down, I am love, I am light, I am beautiful. In my high school, everyone knew me as like the lesbian. I know because they walked past me in the hallways and someone said, that's the lesbian. And I was like, <laughs> really? We don't care if you're a Catholic, if you're Jewish, if you're black, if you're white, if you're gay or straight, we want you to be happy at CNN. We have about 500 dogs with the Vanderpump Dog Foundation. We needed them in a time where we needed to find community mm -hmm. and find support of mm -hmm. people like us. So it's all about including everybody in the conversation and mm -hmm. so showing how love is love regardless of how you identify. I think that what you are doing here is so impactful and important. All that more right here on The, the Q, Q Agenda! Agenda. <laughs> what perspectives do they bring if, if you were to kind of break it down by... Well, we're very different people and we're all in different places in our lives. You know, I bring in the Latino immigrant married man. I've been married for six years in a relationship for 10. Um, then you have somebody like Liana, who, who's a comedian and she's also a political commentator and she's very passionate about politics. Um, and she just found the love of her life and she's in a committed relationship with her girlfriend and her girlfriend has two kids so right. we also get to see parenthood through her eyes um then um juliana who is trans latina advocate and activist and uh um who who's all about representation and about passing is one of her biggest passions as well because that's also another subject of you know when you come to um, talk to members of the community, the element of passing is something that yeah. we don't talk about enough. And passing, as I'm sure you all know, is when you look more feminine or masculine or, or where you define yourself in those lines. And then uh, Victor, who is Gen Z, Gen Z, and he is this young, gorgeous Afro-Latino man uh, from the Bronx of all places. He's very opinionated, but he brings in a fresh perspective and it's been transformative to see him grow through this experience. When I remember when we first started um, uh, talking uh, about the show to him, and he wasn't even sure if he would vote or how his vote would impact you know, the election. And now you see him all yeah. gun ready to go. Like he voted and showing his sticker and, and he's so passionate about, you know, changes and then and, and having a voice. And he tells us about his conversations with his friends. And, and it's been incredible to see the different of our generations and where we're at and where our priorities are. And they're all on the table and anybody and everybody can relate to those conversations, but you're just seeing them again through our lens. And I think that that's what that's what makes shows like this and, and emphasizes the importance of trusting, trusting creatives who represent themselves and going out of your way to make sure that that happens, going out of your way to make sure you facilitate that is because what you, what you end up getting is you get something that people can relate to. And at its very core, superficially, people will relate to things that are where they see themselves in it. But if you dig deeper, people who express themselves Genuinely, we can always Correct. relate to that, and that's Correct. that is what crosses the thing. Because on one hand, you have you have a a lesbian woman, two gay men, a, a transgender woman. <clears throat> on the other hand, you have a Gen Z queer person in Victor, who his coming out story for my millennial gener generation, I did not think we would hear those stories yeah. of I just you know he he has had such a loving and accepting 
way to just naturally come out. And coming from Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. Which yeah. was also, he used to go knocking from door to door to yeah. preach the word of, of the Lord. And then, and then you have Liana who has the whole, the opposite, like Christian, almost fundamental. Yeah, Baptist. Uh, yeah. What, what, uh, um, conversion therapy kind of, she got the, you know, the scary worst mm-hmm. case scenario, which is all too familiar to, to our generation. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but what the key to this is that when, so when we're, when we approach brands with, with this, this cast of people, this, this creative, fun environment. Um, now more than ever, the response has been like, yeah, tell us what they have to say. Tell us what you would do with it. It's no longer, can we, can we kind of temper our expression to be malleable to the market? It's now the value is, and it's being demonstrated, we're part of uh, ANA's AIM initiative, which is to help um, me- accurately measure and advocate for uh, inclusion and diversity in marketing. Um, because we're starting to see the actual data that tells us that when people connect to content on a cultural level uh, through their identity, if they have that relationship with it, that means that the they'll connect better with the product behind it, with the brand behind it, with the messaging, with the overall tone. So when, when you're looking for that, if you're looking into the, the Latino LGBT segment, if you're looking to connect with them, it's the conversation has to shift away from how do we make it, how do we approach them? Who are they specifically? Who can we target when we're looking at the segments to target? And it has to be more like, who's coming up with this creative? Who's coming up with this? Are there people with a stake because they're part of the community involved? You nailed it yeah. there because in my, to my experience, and I've worked with many different networks, to have representation in the position of like the decision makers, like yeah. to have somebody like you, on the other end, who supports it and understands it. Because then also, like they're supporting and then also, also the element of being able to understand it. The fact that at LATV, we have LGBTQ creators and decision makers and and we are all come from different parts. We have Latin America, we have Mexico, we have North America, we have all kinds of different Latinos in the creative pool. It just is, it's just a completely different story. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's, we like to call for, instead of the term uh, underrepresented, we like to say underinvested because Absolutely. we, more than any other demographic, um, Latinos just, we, we are not represented accurately on TV. And then you add the LGBTQ layer onto it and it gets even worse. So our mission, our call to action is learn from the success that we have, learn from the success that you see, learn from the reason that you might be even attending these events to know that the the value is there of of this segment and the 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 key to unlock it is to make a friend from within absolutely it's important to emphasize that it's because we trust and empower the latinx lgbtq community to represent themselves that we have a property that is sought after by clients it's respected by nonprofits and advocacy groups enjoyed by our audience and audiences worldwide through the reverie tv app which will no doubt help us create more shows and content and ultimately provide more opportunities to the LGBTQ community. Absolutely right. It's been an incredible journey and so much more to come. But we want to thank you again for joining us today and invite you to tune into LATV or visit us at LATV.com or any of our social media accounts. And we'll see you later.